Hey traders, this is T Bradley 90 from the My Investing Club chat. I'm one of the top mentors and moderators in chat. As a special gift to our viewers on YouTube, we have created a free two hour course to help teach you how to start a consistently profitable trading business and identify high paying setups in just 30 days. There will be limited seating every week, so register for the course and reserve your spot now using the link in the description. As a special bonus for everyone that watches the entire video, we will give you the link to a free 10 hour additional mini course that has never been released to the public. Register now before all slots completely fill up. All right, guys, we're officially recording week 16 of my Wednesday, 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time webinar, new member orientation webinar every single week. Uh, let's get into some questions. If you guys have some questions, otherwise I can talk about, you know, my trades today, what my thought process was, just kind of what I was thinking. Uh, what do you guys want to talk about today? Anybody got some questions? Brandon, what's up? Mize, what's up? <laughs> Thanks, man. Yeah, I just I should probably get into posting more charts lately. I just get I I I man, I have so much to do on the back end, man, that sometimes I literally just forget to, you know, remember that people want to learn from my charts or other people's charts. So I'll try to be more vocal with my charts lately. I just I I, I take months off and years sometimes. I just cause sometimes I'm like, you know what, Alex and Dow got it covered, but sometimes, you know, people want to hear from what I do or my thought process or whatever. So I'll just I'll try to post more. Um Menard, what's up? Uh, what did you see in OESX to have a short bias? I saw low float, high institutional ownership, uptrending over VWAP. I was thinking first down strategy. All right, so let's go to this. I will tell you exactly what I was thinking, brother. <coughs> I actually saw this late. I saw this super late. I saw this so late that I was like, shit, I'm not gonna be able to get a borrow from it. And then I hit up I hit up Cobra and they were like, dude, it's ETB. And I was like, oh shit, it's easy to borrow. Hell yeah. So this was my trade on it today. I unfortunately, my entry was so good. I only got a starter on it. So here's the thing. Let's go live, right? Let's go live. Pay attention with me. Pay close attention. So I use three minute charts. If you guys like, here, we could do a one minute. I don't care. Like most people use one minutes, whatever. I'll talk one minute. It doesn't matter. The point is, is when I'll get to all these guys, don't worry. When you get to, uh, when you have something like this pre-market, when a stock is opening or near its pre-market highs, this is not weak. There's no sign of weakness in this, right? Like you're waking up, you're like, man, the bell's almost ringing. OESX, this is up. Why is it up? We check the daily. We go to the daily. We go, wow, this is actually in an uptrend. If this is a five-year chart, this thing is like, this thing is actually kind of strong. So what the hell's going on? And then you go to the news and then you're like, all right. What's going on? They beat and you know, they beat maybe some earnings, blah, blah, sales, whatever, blah, blah, blah. None of that is good news to me. These are small caps, guys. These are not, this is not NVIDIA. You know what I mean? Like I'm not, I'm not trying to read earnings on a freaking small cap. I'm really not. Like this is not Apple. This is not NVIDIA. I look at earnings and I go, it's, a, it's an immediate short if it has weakness. So this was purely, there's only, look, I'll just be honest. There's three news events that I avoid short, everything else is go time. I don't even look in the, in the freaking details of their, of their earnings beats or earnings misses or contracts or blah, 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 what, or FDA agreement. Get the fuck out of here. There's three things that I avoid on the short side every time. Everything else is go time. What they are is mergers, mergers and acquisitions, a big name attached. So let me make that very clear. If I read in this headline, that OESX, you know, while it's up trending on the daily, if I read in this headline, Jeff Bezos is looking at it, or, you know, freaking Shark Tank guy and just partnered with them, then yeah, I don't want a piece of it no matter what it looks like technically, you know, on a technical matter, I don't care. So I would not have hit this if it was that. And then third is phase two. So again, phase two and three biotechs I avoid. Uh, I avoid major acquisitions and mergers. And third, I avoid things with a big name attached. So if, you know, Mark Cuban was like, hey, I'm acquiring OESX, man, because they can do one hell of a, you know, blah, 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 whatever they're known for, then I would say hell to the no. <coughs> so I'd avoid. So what did I look for on this? What did I see? I saw it up and I was like, fuck, I'm too late uh, to even get reserves just in case it tanks. And then when it did tank, that first candle on the three minute, dude, this 
not only broke like was a death candle, this broke a huge support, right? Like that's huge, man. This level that it hit pre-market. So I was like, dude, when you have an opening candle out there, the first candle of the day that looks like this, are you kidding me? That's weak as hell, man. That's so freaking weak. So when this started, and if I remember correctly live, I think it went down first before it came out. Like this, this motherfucker literally just kept dropping. And I said, okay, this is go time, man. I don't care institutional ownership. This is purely a panic play, 100% technical play. So I looked over at Cobra and I was like, oh, sick, easy to borrow. I was like, okay, I'll throw a little bit. I don't, I don't go crazy on easy to borrow. So I was like, let me put a little bit on. So I had scales. <clears throat> let me uh, remove. I'll show you where I scale or where I where I had scales. I literally got a 324. That was my app. That was my starter. I was pissed too because I basically almost top ticked it, but I wanted to scale this. So I was willing to go all the way up to about I think like maybe like maximum through maximum absolute maximum 340. Uh, but like if this would have broke this candle, it would have been totally bullish. But I was willing to scale this man. That was so weak out of the gate on something that people thought was uh, kind of bullish. And here's the sinker, here's the nail in the coffin, man. Here's the cannonball that sunk the ship. It was a freaking chat room pump, dude. Some chat room, I'm not gonna mention names, got in right here. He sold immediately. His whole room got fucking trained on. It drops two candles, pops back up. I go, dude, I'm gonna hit the pop towards VWAP. Absolutely perfect pop towards VWAP. I only got a starter and I want it here. I want it here, I want it here a lot more. And then I just piecemealed out. It was so unbelievably weak on the way down. I could see the tape that I literally just piecemealed out. I was like, 310, 3, 2, what was that? 90, 294, I don't know, 286. Like, I was just like, dude. And then I literally knew it would go red, but I didn't have the patience, man. I was like, if it's going to go to 290, it's going to go red. You know what I mean? Like, if a stock is literally going to go all the way from freaking 3, what, 57 to, to 285, and, and that's the majority of the move, it's going to go red too, man. It's almost inevitable. So, you know, suffice it to say, I just honestly didn't have the pay. It was too quick of a move. You have to take it if it's that quick. I mean, I caught the whole move, basically. So, you know, it was only a starter, but it is what it is, man. You're not going to nail home run home runs every day, but it was a great win, and, and I'll take it. Uh, so chat room, technical analysis, breaking supports on the way down, super weak on the tape, hit the pop at VWAP, uh, willing to scale a certain level with a stop uh, over here. So simple as that, man. It's just, it's very simple, man. It's, there's nothing, there's no brainiac shit about it, man. It's just very simplified. Um, let's see. <clears throat> so hopefully that answered your question, Menard. Uh, where do you find the archive? Wildy. Uh, yep. Thank you. Hallie Kun. Thank you. There's the link, buddy. So if you're annual or lifetime, you have access to the archive. Brand, <laughs> yeah, I'll post one. Uh, nasty names. When going long, how do you build your watch list? Uh, yeah, no problem, Art. Uh, here's the thing, man. I don't long at all. So if you do long, what you want to long is the first bounce strategy, right? Like you want to long strong stocks, you know, that are really kind of breaking out and pulling back to a major support. So you know, like here, let me just uh, let me remove. My comfort level is not long, man. I do well short, so I just continued that for years. I did the first two years of my career long, and I just it was just never my comfort zone. Uh, but you know, it's things like this, man. It's things like this. It's like you want to find the supports for the stock, right? So if it was like drop, if if a really strong stock is making a big move and then pulling back to a certain level of support, then yeah, you could long off it with tight risk, and that's called the first bounce, right? Unfortunately for this, this was just a tankathon, and I think. I pray to God no MIC members got dumped on, but a lot of members of other chat rooms got dumped on because their gurus or whatever you want to call them, gurus, led them into danger and just let them right off a cliff. So again, you know, it's just when you're looking to build your watch list long, it's just line to line. It's not even that if you're a true trader, like a true non-biased Switzerland trader, you could go both long or short. Don't ever have a bias. Just it's line to line, whatever the chart tells you, man. This told me that a stock was up, it was overextended enough to come down. If it had major weakness like it did in the opening candle and then the second candle, the loans were fucked. So then you go in. That, that's the point. I didn't have a short bias on this whatsoever. In fact, going in live, I almost had a long bias. I didn't, but I didn't have a short bias. I just played what the market gave me. And once I saw this, I was like, it's go time on a pop, scale the pop, cover on the way down. That's just, that's just the way about it. Uh, Tarek, 
How do you search the video vault every time I enter a keyword, the search goes to blogs? Yeah, we're still fixing the website, man. We're updating the website amazingly right now. So don't worry about that right now. Uh, Tarek, if you need any help finding a specific video, uh, what, you know, just reach out to me or reach out to any of our moderator team. But you know, right now we have, these are the categories. So these are buttons, uh, you know, like if you obviously click this, these are the first bounce videos. Uh, but we are making it even easier for members soon. So don't worry, don't worry about a couple things like this. We're making it much easier. It's going to be sick. Uh, let's see. Yo, Cedric, what's up? Uh, if you plan, uh, if you plan to scale, for example, 585, 595, and 605, with a stop at 615, and you get filled on, uh, we'll just say XYZ at 585, then it goes further, but stuffs at like 590. Would that be an indicator of a temporary top and a signal that you move the rest of your uh, size to the stuff area and add back 10 cents above? I mean, sometimes, man, sometimes. So, like, here's the thing, right? Like, I'll say it right here. If I had scales right here, right here, right here, right here, right? And say, for the sake of your kind of, I, I, I'm thinking just, you know, kind of off, just an imaginary example, right? Like, this is not a stock today, per se, probably. But if this did jump, actually, we'll just use those. If this did jump up to right here and I got filled, right? Watch this. If I got filled right here, so say, you know, red. So say this got filled, you know, I get my starter on, on DOS. <clears throat> And then it stuffs right here, which is huge because this is a top level, right? Like if it stuffs right here, that's huge. Like that's, that, that's really bad for longs because this is a very important level. So if this fucking, you know, base of the candle on the top, on the top side, you know, screw the wigs. I, I, I go by bases. Uh, if this goes in, it fills me and then stuffs hard. I'm going to chase that down man, a hundred thousand percent because that was such a key level, but it depends on the stuff. So if I get a massive stuff through VWAP, yeah, I'm going to chase that down. Even if it ruins my average and brings my average from here to say like down here because I'm chasing, like I'm trying to fill right here, but here's my new average. I'm going to do that, man. I'm going to do that every single time. And hopefully, you know, I have more up here and it adding down here won't affect my average too much. Maybe just even right there, but hell yeah, man. I'm not just going to ride um, necessarily a starter. If this is proving to me that the stock is absolutely weak and willing to go down. Because here's the thing, man. I, my starter was right here because, because the price action was right there. Had it moved up here and then done this stuff, oh my God, yeah, I still would have been scaling this. Are you kidding me? Because that's just ideal. You know, I wanted it to go up first and then stuff. Like, that's the thing I always want. I want it to go up and then stuff because that's like a double whammy. If it just takes out of the gate, yeah, it's weak. But if it tries to go up a little bit and then proves it can't even go up and then death stuffs, done, dude. Done. <coughs> oh man freaking gravel uh yeah i know you're big on back testing well i used to be man i don't anymore <laughs> uh I, I know you're big on back testing. any tips how to create an effective process on that yeah yeah i'll show you the best way to back test so here's the best way to back test take a screenshot of everything that ran the day here's your screenshot right whether you traded it actually do the whole day though so you know the trading day do the whole day if you trade it, if you didn't trade it, just the major runners on the day. Here's then what you're gonna do is you're gonna go to our archive. Let me go back. One sec. If you have access to our archive, this is why this is so key. You are going so now you have your screenshots. Save a folder of those hundreds, thousands of charts. Man, I got hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of charts over the past years. Just things that you know, just to learn price action. Then Go to the watch list every single day. So like, here's an example, right? Like October, you know, 4th, blah, blah, blah. Here's Alex's watch list. Go now see all these, screenshot all the watch lists in our, um, in our archive. And now go back to TOS, man, and do TOS on demand. This is what I did for years. Click on demand. Click the day, whatever the day is. Actually, let's do it. Let's do an example. Let's do an example. Uh, let's see. What was this day? Monday, October. <clears throat> October 14th, 2019. October 14th, we'll put it at 5.30. Uh, actually, yep. So this was, oh shit, I gotta do the chart though. Uh, SES, IMRN, SES. This is called Think or Swim On Demand for any of you that are asking. This is day two of SES. 
This is day two, understand? I set the time at 5.30 Pacific Standard Time, so that's 8.30 uh, Eastern Standard Time in the day. Uh, it's going live right now, right? Oh, yep, see, it's live. And now I'm going to fast forward. I think this fast forward is like 10 minutes at a time or something like that. Oh, wait, how do I? I haven't done this in a while. Yep, 10 minutes. Then just play the day, man. Just play the fucking day. Boom, it's going up. Here's his plan. Let me go through this. Let me back test it. Let me see if it goes according to his plan. What I thought, oh, it's squeezing, just like Alex said. Oh, shit, it's really squeezing, just like Alex said. I don't know, man. I'm just giving you an example. But the point is, that's the best way to back test. I'm literally replaying SES on October 14th, 2019. And you are able to see what the hell happened, what the hell the thought process was. And that is how you're going to become a better trader. And anybody, anybody who's too good for think or swim on demand in here, you're full of shit. I'm not too good for think or swim on demand. If I wanted to get better, even after six years, I should be doing an hour of this a night. It just makes you better, man. It's just extra screen time, man. Just freaking do this. Uh, anybody. Uh, do you take volume into consideration and how far it breaks support when you get that week open like OESX? And if so, how do you judge the volume? Yeah, I mean, it's like, Phil, you don't have to overthink this so much. I go line to line. Again, if it has enough volume on the day, like 1 million plus, I just want to see a lot of volume come out. So, oh, we, oh wait, hold on. I got to take this off. Let's go back to normal. <clears throat> Yeah, I like to see a lot of volume. So like, what was the volume on this? 346,000, as you guys can see down here when I hover over the volume bar, uh, 346,000 and then this candle was 300,000. And this wasn't even trading too much volume pre-market, like not like crazy amounts, right? So when that much volume comes out, yeah, I like to see that, man. I like to see a lot of people stuck for sure. So I pay attention to that, not as much, but just go line to line, do the price action. But yeah, that is an extra tool in your, in your arsenal, 100%. Good, glad that worked for you, Cedric. What do you do with first day plays closing strong? Do you watch them the next day? Yeah, yeah. So, AGRX, right? Let's say, so this was the, oh, okay. Let me just talk about this really quick, just so you guys have an example, right? Uh, here's, my, here's my chart. <clears throat> This is a nail and bail, man. I don't, I don't, I don't overstay on first red days. They're really a, a great nail and bail setup. So, here's what I was thinking, right? Uh, first red day, multi-day runner, stock up, 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 shorts fuck, shorts fuck, shorts really fuck. Then here's what happens. Here's the red to green line, previous close. You guys understand that? Everybody familiar? Good. If you're not, get familiar. Line to line. This thing is breaking sports on the way down, but this is the one to pay attention to. Boom. It slams red. I am willing to scale up to, quote unquote, line to line. Where's the next line of resistance? Right here. As you guys can see, it correlates with this consolidation uh, level. So I scaled it. Boom, boom. Uh, I didn't get as much on as I wanted. I was willing to scale up to about uh, the next line, which was maybe like, I'd say 270. Yeah, about 270, maybe 265. I was willing to give this some room, man, because this is this is not only a multi-day runner. It's the three-day rule. And this bow has been teaching for decades, you know, day one, day two, day three, they usually get back pretty good. So if this slams red and a three-day rule, it's pretty much gone home. And you guys could have caught a really, really sick move out of this. You know, I nailed and bailed and was gone. But, <clears throat> you know, if this closes strong, like, say, 280, it's basically off my watch for tomorrow. But if it closes weak where it is, here's what I'm doing. I'm looking for outer lines. So tomorrow, I don't want to hit this. I don't want to hit this. I want to hit these. I want to hit a long, tiring journey back into major resistance levels. I want to hit lines up here make sense outer fantasy lines so you know when something is broken down now it's kind of a low hanger for tomorrow but you got to wait for the fantasy levels and if i'm being completely honest i would probably wait for maybe even 290 starter yeah because again this is not this is not where i make the majority of my money i make the majority of my money on the e oesx's the agrx's uh so this is like this is like uh i, I don't know this is like a you know, throw a penny in a fountain and wish that you get a perfect fantasy trade. So if this makes the long journey, yeah, maybe I'll take a stab at it. But this is not my usual go-to. Uh, I'm just telling you how I would play it or how to kind of uh, look into something like that if you are in the button. 
Uh, let's see. With on demand, you can change the rate it replays. Oh, can you? I, I, dude, I haven't done it in so long. I can't even remember. <laughs> so whoever, everybody, whoever wants a tutorial on on demand, maybe Halicon's your guy. <laughs> I can't remember, man. I haven't done it in years. Uh, if it breaks so many lines like that, it's hella weak. I love to short the pops. Yep. Jack knows. Yep. Bill, no problem. When shorting a spike at the morning open, when do you wait for a pop confirmation and when do you place fantasy orders ahead of time? HRX spike at open today, for example. Oh, something like this? Well, here's the thing. Let me get rid of all this. This is a good example. So I am not placing fantasy orders on something like this. Why? Because the trend is so fucking strong. Dude, this has been up for three days. I don't I don't want to hit this if it's if it's if it's showing that it's got light. Fantasy orders, guys, let me make this very clear, are perfect for something that is obviously with a lot of downside. Does that make sense? So, I mean, I mean, a lot of overhead. So, like, people and longs are already stuck. Makes sense? So, I don't want to be long. I mean, I don't want to be shorting and setting fantasy orders on something that is, like, there's not many people underwater. And there's there's no one underwater in this, man. Even pre-market, there's not many. Dude. The majority of the volume is right here in the last couple days run up. So, you know, I wouldn't place fantasy orders on something like this. Now, something like um, Sesson. Something like Sesson today. This is fantasy orders. Like, this is not a great example because it was pretty illiquid today, and this is just kind of choppy and not really. But this is my point. This has not been up for three days. It went up pre-market. This is a stock. And now it's opening very low from its highs. Fantasy orders, man. This is where you place, man. People are underwater. They're halfway through, like literally people are already underwater. Where? Probably at the 132. Probably that. I'd probably scale that. You know, this is just something I had on my radar. But that's the point. That's a fantasy order level to scale. <clears throat> I, hope that, I hope that's clear. Apparently, I can still give these webinars when I'm sick as a dog. <laughs> it's a good talent, I guess. <laughs> as I fucking die over here. Uh, does that make sense, guys? I hope, I hope those were clear. Those are pretty two good examples today of just two of my main setups that I trade. Yep. Hell yeah. Yeah, thanks, man. Here's my tea. Does anybody have uh, I might keep this a little short guys today as my as my voice is so freaking raspy. Um, does anybody does anybody have some kind of you know very specific questions that maybe today or thanks buddy. Later. Yeah, thanks man. That's the number one way I do things Phil is just keep kiss man. Keep it simple stupid. If you have to overthink, if you're over analyzing, if you're over questioning, it can be simplified man. It really can. Everybody looks at a stock chart and they want it. Look, if you give a stock chart to 10 different traders, veterans, non-veterans, everybody is going to come up with almost a different thesis who are untrained because, because they, they see what they want to see, man. The, the beauty of MIC or the beauty of what we teach is, dude, the lines are the lines. I don't give a shit what your opinion is or anybody's for that matter. The line is the line, guys. The chart doesn't give a shit about you. The market doesn't give a crap. The, the, the price action is in the lines. If it goes up to this line, it should, quote unquote, should fail. If it goes to this line, it should, quote unquote, be supported. If you are bringing in your girlfriend's fight with you, your roommates not being able to pay their rent, your, your problems into the chart, the chart doesn't know that language. It doesn't give a fuck. It's going to act accordingly based on the language that it is, and that is price action. That is orders getting filled at certain levels, at certain lines. Again, are you speaking the language of the chart, or are you bringing your emotions in, 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 a, in a language that doesn't even recognize the language that you're bringing in? It's like it, it, you can't bring emotions into math, and that's what trading is. So the reason why a bunch of new traders fail is they go, oh, man, like I think this looks like a breakdown, and this looks like here, and this looks good. and this No, dude, where are the lines? Has it been breaking down? Does it look like a short? What's the daily look like? But just ask the major questions and then simplify it. What's the trend? Where are people stuck? Where would people want out? And where should I put my risk? It's as simple as that. Trading is not easy. Don't, don't get me wrong. I can't, I can't state this enough. 
trading is not an easy profession because again, we are humans and we, we are not terminators like freaking Arnold after 20,000 decades of being the terminator. We are not terminators. We are people who bring our emotions in sometimes and that's okay. But you just gotta remember that, that the people who do that usually lose. Or the times that you do that, you usually lose. Um, let me, uh, let's see. Yeah, so guys, hard stops. I mean, I talk about this weekly, but again, you know, hard stops are so key, and I'll show you why. Uh, what was, uh, yeah, like AGRX, perfect. Like, you guys cannot be shorting, you know, while most people bash on hard stops where the number one guy's crazy, because you guys cannot just be shorting here and holding until it comes back. Yeah, these are turds. Yeah, a lot of these stocks fail at the end of the day, but you can't short here and, and, and just hold through all this. Man, you just can't do that, man. You gotta, especially if you're sized in, you know, you can't go, hey, thousand shares, thousand, 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 five thousand, ten, you, you can't do that. So again, guys, risk management at the end of the day is key. Don't be the trainer who's green for 30, 40 days in a row. And then that 30 or 41st day, 31st day, you're dead. You, you just can't do that, man. It's the cocky trade. Don't trade like that. Use market hard stops. They protect you. They're guaranteed fills out. Uh, sometimes they will encounter some slippage for you. That's going to happen. But I can promise you that the way to have a lasting trading career is market hard stops and keep yourself safe. Hey, Tarek, thanks, buddy. Appreciate it. Uh, let's see. Lastly, guys, how to, how to contact us, um, myinvestingclub.co, uh, alextomiz.co. We put together two webinars that we definitely want you guys to watch. Uh, if you, especially if you're non-members guys, you know, sign up as we have limited seating weekly, um, you know, watch the webinar, see how you like it. And, uh, and I, and I think you guys really will like it and it's, and it's worth a watch. So www.alextomiz.co or, or www.myinvestingclub.co. And, uh, you guys are really going to like it. Uh, here's how to contact us real quick. <clears throat> uh, Twitter, my investing club, Instagram, my invest club, very standard. Uh, Instagram for Alex is going to be Alex underscore Tamiz. Twitter is AT09 underscore trader. Modern Rock, Modern Rock for IG and Twitter. Uh, if you want to contact me personally through email, I will help you. I'll get you on the phone. I'll get you in the club. Uh, Tosh at myinvestingclub.com. Twitter, T Bradley 90. Uh, you can watch me drive around to LA <laughs> or talk about stocks, whatever. Uh, Instagram, uh, tbradley90 underscore trader. Don't be shy. Schedule a call with us today. We're here for you. We're here to cut your learning curve. Uh, we're just very hands-on, man. MIC is a family. It's brotherhood. As you guys can see, everybody's just so humble, willing to learn, man. When you show up hungry, asking the right questions, that's what it's all about, man. We're, we're all just here to get better. Bao's still learning after two decades. I'm still learning after, uh, I guess, half a decade. Alex is still learning. Like, guys, we're forever students. So with the camaraderie and the collective experience of everybody here learning together, even myself, me doing these webinars, it just enforces the fact that, that, that whatever I'm teaching or whatever I'm trying to help you guys out with, maybe understand for the first time, I need to still imply and implement these rules on a weekly basis for years to come. So, you know, don't be the trader man that tries to get rich quick and then, you know, he's like, I don't need any help. And then boom loses all their money because they tried to, you know, treat trading as a lottery ticket and get rich overnight. When I can tell you guys, there's no glamor about this industry. There's really not. There's no polish. It is a daily grind. You get a community. You get people that can help you that see the same things. And you try to make your money every single day together and support each other because you need a positive experience as it's not easy with what's quote, you know, I, I equate the, the, the trading career very much like the acting career, like, cause I, you know, I live in LA, so I got a lot of actor friends, right? They see a lot of rejection, man. For every 20 auditions, maybe they get a callback or a job. The point is, is like when you're a new trader, it, you, for every five trades you take, one's going to be a winner until you go to the point where you're break even. And then every winner's a loser or every loser's a winner. You know, it's one-on-one -on -one and one, take a step forward, take a step back. That's okay. That's broke. But then you need to get to the point, man, where it's like the inverse of the acting, right? Is like now for every 20 auditions, you only miss out on like one of them. I don't know. My point is, is you go from losing, losing, losing to break even, to break even, to treading water, to now making money and having a system and having a process that works. But again, you're not going to have that shit for step three of your journey until you really admit that you're stuck in levels one through two or phase one through two and you suck and you need help and that's okay because we all sucked at one point. 
We all tried to figure this shit out at one point. We all banged our head against the wall, wanted to quit 10,000 times. But the point is, is when you get to that step three, that level three, phase three, whatever you want to call it, it gets easier, but you need to implement it daily. You need help and you need support and you need to uh, make sure that you're paying attention to your own trading weekly and just getting better, getting better, getting better. So thank you guys for forever students. Stay hungry, stay motivated. And uh, MIC's got your back, man, as much as we can. So reach out if you want to, if you want to sign up or I can help you with that. And, and fucking A, man, reach out and network with your fellow traders. Guys, I'm going to cut it here. My voice is absolutely shot. I hope you, uh, I hope you got some value out of this today. Happy that you guys came. I do this every, I, uh, I do this every Wednesday. So we'll talk about next week, what I traded, what I didn't trade, what there, what there is to talk about, <laughs> whatever it is, whatever it is, we'll get you next week. Thanks guys. Yeah. Thank you. Whew, I'm going to try to feel better. <laughs> Thanks guys. Hey traders, this is Tosh. I go by T Bradley 90 in the My Investing Club chat. Just wanted to reach out and say if you have any questions about MIC, joining MIC, maybe you're a member already, you have three ways to contact myself personally and through MIC. You can hit our social media, you can hit me through PMs in chat, or you can contact us through my email at Tosh at myinvestingclub.com. That's T O S H at myinvestingclub.com. I will get back to you in a timely manner, and I'm saying this because I'm here to help, and I don't want anybody to be afraid to reach out and ask any question that they have. We are here for you guys. All right, see you guys.